Hi, Gordon Wade here. I'm doing a refiguring job on this 14 inch Newtonian primary mirror and uh, I wanted to show you a few of the figuring strokes that I'm using. Now to begin this refiguring job I first repolished the mirror. I gave it a couple hours uh, using fixed post polishing on my machine and then I did the normal rough parabolization where I deepened out the center of the mirror. So now I'm at about the one quarter wave or one sixth wave somewhere in that range and uh, I'm starting to perfect the actual shape of the surface. Now in the last session, uh, prior to this one, I had a, a high area in the center from about the five inch range on, on in. And I'll show you the stroke that I used to uh, fix that up a little bit. Uh, we'll add just a little bit of more cerium oxide here. This is kind of a thick version of cerium oxide so that you can see it. Normally in figuring at this stage, I'd be quite a little bit thinner than this. Uh, you, the thinner the cerium oxide, the better the quality of the surface that you end up with. Uh, but for this, it's a little uh, risky what I'm doing here with the camera and everything. So I wanted to use a little thicker uh, slurry so that uh, it would not skip or jump or anything like that. Um, the camera set up here on this video, uh, I'm shooting this on a uh, GoPro. It's a GoPro. Uh, Hero 3 Plus, I believe, and um, it's sitting on the edge of my turntable, so you actually get to see figuring from the viewpoint of the mirror. <laughs> so in those previous sessions, I was basically using a W stroke, where I uh, W left and right, back and forth, uh, basically over the area that I want to deepen. So in this case, it was from the 5 inch radius on in, so I'm going from left five inches to right five inches. Then every time I stop and turn the polisher a little bit in my hands so that each time I uh, start a new stroke I'm presenting a new diameter of the polisher uh, to the mirror. So basically I did this back and forth stroke, W stroke like this, uh, in the previous session for uh, quite a few minutes, seven or eight minutes I suppose. Uh, the mirror was a little extra high in the very center. So I also used a long straight stroke like this, where I just went back and forth, and this doesn't go right over the center. Instead, it's about uh, a half an inch or three quarters of an inch to the right of center. And the reason you do that, uh, most of the action takes place, of course, underneath the polisher on the edges of it. And if you go right up the center with this four and a quarter inch tool, you'll wear a kind of a groove, a track in the mirror uh, two inches either side of that center and so you'll end up with a kind of a bad zone So to avoid that by offsetting the mirror to the right a half an inch or three-quarters of an inch What you're doing is is causing the right side of the polisher to hit the mirror at a different radius than the left side of the polisher and that spreads the the uh, work of the polisher around a little bit and avoids getting a, a zone there in the center of the mirror so those two strokes are what I used in the last session and I did, uh, oh, roughly 10 or 12 minutes, I suppose, all together with those. Uh, after I finished that, I put the mirror back on the tester, uh, Foucault tester, and did a test on it. And what I saw was I had pretty much fixed my problem there. And now the only thing that's left, I have a, a high zone out at about the 6-inch radius, a little inside, 1 inch in from the mirror, and a very slight high area, about 4 inches inside the mirror. So uh, what I'm going to do is to work outside there a little bit. I put a little bit more cerium oxide out there and I'm spreading it out to the edge of the mirror. Uh, I'm lifting up on the polisher here so I'm not really putting any pressure on it, just spreading that cerium oxide out. Now the technique I'm going to use here is to offset the mirror over the edge, or excuse me, offset the polisher over the edge of the mirror and then use a tangential stroke. So I've got the center of the mirror right on that 6 inch or 5.8 inch radius and uh, I'm just really not applying any pressure, uh, just the weight of the polisher itself and then doing this little radio, uh, excuse me, little tangential stroke. And the difficulty is when you're working the outside area of a mirror with a small polisher, not much happens. It's really slow to get any polishing done and the bad part of that is that uh, the polisher will leave marks out there. If you do this for too long, you'll end up with a set of, you know, concentric uh, scratch-looking things, scratches or uh, compressions on the mirror surface. 
So you don't want to do that. So you use a very gentle pressure in the first place. And in the second place, you want to do just a little blending. So in this case, again, I have a, a high area at about the 6-inch mark. I also have a slight area that's high at about the 4-inch mark. So what I'm going to do is a combination stroke here, where I stroke first over the 6-inch area for a few strokes, and then run a stroke with the center of the mirror over the 4-inch area. And that works both of those and tends to uh, average out your work marks a little bit. So I usually take like four strokes and then one over the, toward the center. Three, four, inside. One, two, three, four, inside. One, two, three, four, inside. And uh, the trick to this, you really don't want these strokes to be precise. It's not like every stroke has to be identical. And uh, even your count, if you miss it and do five instead of four, that's not an issue. Uh, that little bit of randomness isn't going to hurt anything. And the effect is when you, you know, Z to the left, or V to the left, I guess it would be, uh, you're, you're getting rid of some of the rough marks that you're putting into the mirror. So uh, it's a nice, nice technique uh, because you're kind of solving two problems at the same time on the surface of your mirror, and you're reducing the roughness that you would normally kick up if you did the two uh, radii separately. So it's a technique I like to use quite a little bit. And I'll show you another technique that is uh, even better for this sort of problem. Uh, when I have two hills on the mirror, you can use an elliptical stroke or a circular stroke. And what you want to do is to rig it so that the center of the mirror runs in a circle between the outer and the inner zones that you want to target. So I'm basically just going to hang it over and run with an overhang in a circular motion like this. Now I don't, I don't quite make it circular, I actually make it more elliptical uh, in the direction that I'm stroking. But this is a really cool stroke because quite a bit of the time you're running radially on this stroke and all of those radial strokes help you to get rid of the uh, concentric marks that you're leaving on the mirror. Uh, the marks on a mirror too, another way to put a mark on the mirror is to reverse direction with the polisher. You know, if I have it and, and go back and forth like this, then every time I stop and change direction and turn around, that roughens the mirror up a little bit. So by using a circular or elliptical stroke like this, you don't have that uh, stop and uh, reacceleration in the other direction. So this is a nice stroke that will help smooth your mirror uh, over time as you use it. And it's really nice. Uh, what will often happen is you'll do a session in an outer zone there. And when you go to the Foucault test, you'll see, oh, you left a little bit of texture out there that you don't want. Well, as long as you can identify another zone that's a little more inside, you can use a stroke like this to help fix it. So, for example, maybe I have a, a zone out here I need to fix, and I might have another slight hill to three inch zone. Well, if that happened, then I'd run a bigger circle like this. And so that bigger circle works my outer zone and that three inch zone. So by using a fairly small pitch polisher like this, you can work whatever two zones that you have a problem with and at the same time smooth out the mirror a little bit. Now, once again, you don't want to put any pressure on this mirror when you're working out there. Basically, it's just the weight of the polisher itself and uh, my fingers are just on there to guide it and, and keep it in control. So uh, those are kind of the, the general types of techniques that you use when you're trying to plane down the high spots on a mirror. And again, we're pretty close to being a good mirror here at the quarter wave, sixth wave. And uh, to get it to that 20th wave that we'd like to see, uh, you have to go slowly and just give uh, whatever zone is high uh, a little taste of, of a gentle stroke. And basically, you don't want to get in a hurry. Keep the sessions short and do a lot of testing. And just slowly but surely plane down the hills. And uh, eventually, you end up with a nice smooth mirror.